Hey buddy, Scout Crafty here again. It's Friday, TGIF. You made it through another week, and uh, this was a fast week, wasn't it? I can't believe how fast this week went. Anyway, um, uh, we got a few things to do today, a kind of a mosh, a bit of a mosh, but the first thing I want to start off with, um, you know, on Wednesday I did those great uh, four-way wrenches that, uh, that I just love, but uh, the video was running so long I had to cut out a, a section a little part that I did and I had to cut it out, but I didn't get rid of it. It's going to be, uh, I'm going to add it right now. Um, I got this great tap handle. You got to check this out. Okay, next up, look at this beautiful tap handle I picked up on eBay. Uh, I paid, uh, I think it was $9 and $5 shipping. So $14, oh, just beautiful. So let me show you, let me clean it up, show you what it okay, is. Okay, here we go. We're all cleaned up. Uh, all we did was we took it apart cleaned it up with the 50 50 and let me if there's one thing you learn do not be stingy with the 50 50 and clean out all that gunk because you know tapping fluid tends to gunk up and it really look how nice this is just with the wire brush and uh and look how nice it came out this is and you want to talk about a quality tool now first of all you can see here it's made the winter brothers company in Renton, massachusetts now winter brothers was murray and john winter started this company in 1900 and that's a thistle plant there. That was their uh, logo. And uh, they were competing with Greenfield Tap. So, you know, Greenfield Tap was the big one over in Massachusetts. So they had to put out some really good quality stuff. And they did. Look at this. This is just a, a beautiful, beautiful tap wrench. It's their number two, and uh, which is a perfect size for me because it's, uh, it's, it's most of the sizes that I use. And it's just a beautiful beautiful well made these screw off the handle screw off but i uh i cleaned them up nice there was a lot of gunk in there because you know what happens but the uh handles clean up nicely screw back in and when it's done right they stay tight um and this is how it adjusts and here's what's interesting look at this that's a square thread in there can you see that i got some extra lube in there but that's a square thread I mean, they really didn't uh, skimp on this. This is just a beautiful... I can't wait to try it out. Just a beautiful tap wrench. I thought you'd enjoy that. Um, and there we go. I got that on, like I said, on eBay. Good now, one point. thing with tools that I'm going to use, like that tap handle, I never go over the top with an over-the-top restoration because, you know, when something's super polished, you, you kind of not tend to not want to use it as much, you know, because it uh, becomes like a show queen. And, uh, and rightly so. Some of the tools deserve retirement, but this one still has another 100 years worth of work in it and uh, I'm going to put it to use because uh, that's what I like to do with that that type of tool. It's going to be a useful Isn't tool. Isn't that such a sweet little tap handle? Jeez, uh, I love it. Anyway, uh, for today we're going to be doing a, a couple things. Um, later on we got a pair of uh, Kreuter unusual burn appliers, gas and burn appliers. I, uh, you, you never rarely see these and um, right now uh, I had to do a project during the week on uh, on my car and I needed a nylock nut you know that's a nylon locking nut if you've never seen it, I'm going to show it to you but uh, let me tell you well, what happened. I started was last week I needed a nylock or a nylon locking nut for uh, something I was doing on my car and I came to my I always have a box of uh, I have them scattered throughout the shop but I have a box here where I might go to I need a quarter by 20 I opened it up I was it was empty I must have used them all I can't believe I didn't replace but I went to Amazon I ordered some Hillman quarter by 20 and now I have um, back in business with the uh, with my nylon locking nuts but that made me think for a minute it's like how many ways are there to lock a fastener onto a bolt so I started doing some research because I have to tell you something I've always been a little bit um leery with uh, with these uh, ways to lock down a fastener now in the tool in what we do here in, in the tool industry is what we do is we take a nut and we peen over the top and that's usually a very very rarely do you have these come off they might loosen up a little but they don't come off now uh with these here we have we've all seen these before you have a uh, you know like the star type uh, lock washers and you have the split type spring steel or helical uh type um washers which are supposedly useless and then we have locking nuts and uh the nylon locking nut has a piece of nylon in there that when you screw this down it it creates a force and a pressure to hold it on and then we have this type of of a, a nylon uh, of a locking nut 
which is almost like where they, they kind of crimp the top of the uh, of this fastener tighter so that it creates a force and a, a stress onto the threads and it don't allow it to back off as easy. And it made me think, I said, you know, there's so many different ways to lock it up. We have castle nuts, which, you know, you put on the top and you put a cotter pin through. Um, we have in the aircraft industry, they'll take a nut and they'll, you know, they drill a hole through the side of a nut and then they, they use a safety wire to stop it from unfastening. And then uh, in, I've seen construction where once the nut is on, they just bang the top of the bolt over and, and mushroom it so it can't come up. And uh, very interesting, in the late 60s, there was a, a, a gentleman by the name of uh, Gerhard Junker, and he was doing all kinds of research into what makes fasteners loosen up and, and how which ones are better than others. And he has a lot of, uh, of uh, technical uh advice that he he came up with on, on what to use and what not to use and and i have a question for you out there today because i have a great respect for my subscribers. now this is probably one of the reasons why i can't sleep at night because this is what goes through my mind okay so here we have a uh a bolt okay and and we want to uh put a flat washer this is a flat washer now we can all agree on one thing nobody has a problem with the, what the flat washer's job is the flat washer's job is to distribute the load of the nut uh, equally around an, a specific area. Now, you can see that that washer is 20% larger than the nut, so it, it, it distributes the load, and as we tighten it down, that's what the flat washer job is for. Now, we come to the to the standard split washer now the split washer as we know usually made of a spring steel and the way it's cut has a, a kind of a diagonal cut to it what this is meant to do is when we tighten down the nut this little part here will it gives spring tension now it's not the spring tension that really keeps the nut from uh, backing off it's actually that this little piece of steel here is supposedly to cut into or you know indent itself into the nut and this little bottom corner piece of steel here indent itself onto the the uh, the surface now i'm going to show you here we're going to tighten this up a little bit and i'll show you what happens now i'm just going to tighten it not too much but we're going to tighten it down here and it's starting to spin on the bottom because I don't have it in here. I'm just putting my finger on. But I just tightened it up enough that you can see what happens because it is wood. Now we'll loosen up here. You can see that the washer has dug into the wood a little bit. But if we look very closely, you could see over here, you could see the impression that was made right here. See that? That was made from the lock washer digging into the bottom. And that's how... That lock washer stops the nut because the same thing is happening to the nut in a smaller scale because the nut is hardened. And this is how it's supposed to work. That the nut is gripped by the washer and the base is gripped by the washer. So that's how it don't spin. So my question to you is, do you put the lock washer on alone or do you put a flat washer on first? Now, I know what you're thinking. Since we're kids, we've all been taught flat washer first, then a lock washer, and then the nut, correct? You know, that's, I mean, everybody's been taught that way, but does that mean it's right? Uh, I was actually on a couple engineering forums where a couple engineers had brought up the point that, you know, you're negating the whole idea of what this lock washer is supposed to do. You know, let's say you had a, a nice surface like this, a nice flat surface. It was steel. This lock washer, uh, this regular flat washer would just give more of an opportunity for it to spin loose. Whereas if you went directly with the lock washer onto your base surface, you would have a much better grip than you would if you used a flat washer. So that's my first question for you today. Do you think it's better with the lock washer by itself or... Do you think it's better the way we were taught as kids to put the flat washer on followed by the lock washer? And uh, what's your opinion on that? That's, I'd be interested to know what the majority of you think. Speaking of cool locking devices or lock nuts, I picked this out of the garbage one day at work. Uh, this is from a bus. I believe it's from the steering column. I'm not 100% sure my buddy Brian O'Hare would know. He was, a, he was a mechanic down there and he used to deal with these kind of things. But look at this here that uh you see how this works right you know it's a regular nut spins onto that 
you know, column or whatever it was. Some, And then you would tighten this down and it would squeeze the threads and lock it on there. And talk about a, a device that you didn't want it to come loose. I mean, how how cool is that? Huh? And look at the size of that. It's pretty big. So I grabbed that. It was a little rusted. I wire brushed it. But how cool is that? Uh, speaking of ingenious, you ever see one of these locking nuts? You know, here it's got a little set screw on the side. Have you ever seen, you know, this type and, uh, you know, it works like a regular nut that, you know, spins off and on. But when you want to tighten it, you just take your little hex nut here, your little hex key, and you lock it down. And that's it. It ain't going anywhere. You ain't getting that off. You ever seen one of those? Well, actually, I just made this about five minutes ago. That's the kind of things you do when you, <laughs> you board down the shop. You come up with <laughs> inventions that were made 100 years ago. Okay, for today's project, we have these beautiful pair of Kreuter gas and burn pliers. And the reason I really felt like doing these is because a good friend of the show by the name of Sebastian Horton, he uh, he sent in, his father gave him a pair of uh, pliers that uh, date back to the 20s, and they were a nice pair of Kreuters. And he was asking me if I could help him date them, and uh, he's going to be working on those, a beautiful pair always love Croyd pliers, but these are unusual because for a couple of reasons. First of all, they're gas and burn pliers. Now, what a gas and burn plier is, they're indicative of usually the two openings here. You can see the two openings, and they sometimes have that little opening in the front to grab the burner that you could twist it on and off of a gas stove or things like that. And these are uh, very worn. Uh, these are really, you would consider these almost shot. Look at that just uh so much play in them and you know there must have been some kind of coating on here at one time it's it's all but gone uh the knurling on the handles make me believe it's from the 40s or wartime around that area however they have the screwdriver on the back which usually uh stopped after like 1929 something it was you know it was an early they stopped with the screwdriver on the back so i don't know this might be one of those kind of things that were thrown together with old parts and also when on the inside instead of saying Croyder it says forged steel you could see here on both sides and uh you know it's uh and it has the wire cutter you know always in the back here see in the back here there's a little wire cutter so these were you know I, I tell you they're very useful not when they're worn like this but they will be and again I, I would like to do these up make them look nice and uh Let's get over and uh, take them apart, get to the wire brush, have some fun with these, and see if we can't make these look the way they did years ago. Okay, no problem taking the nut off. A little bit of 50-50 on there and some heat. We took that right off. Um, around here, we can see it had some stampings over here, and they're pretty deep. They look like initial stampings, nothing that uh, we want to keep. The jaws, however... One side has been the other. You could see they, this ply, these pliers were used. I mean, but we'll see if we can, you know, clean them up a little bit with the file. Other than that, let's get started. Now you know my favorite part. Remember what these Croyd pliers look like before we start. And we're calling this project done. And I have to tell you something. Uh, this was an enjoyable project because it really tasked a lot of my, uh, you know, the skills that I have to try and get this up here. First of all, we were able to keep the lettering. You see here what it says here? You see it says uh, Croyder. You get it so the light doesn't uh, blind out Croyder. And it says 1863-9. Now, that 1863-9, the reason that these are so rare, and I'm sure a lot of you have never seen these pliers before, it's because um, we've all seen these burner-style pliers with the, you know, open and closed, and I've done them before, and a lot of times Utica or other companies, Pexto would, would, was popular for making them, but Croyder was the only ones to make a slip joint model. You see the difference here? All the other ones had the single rivet, and they usually had these uh, a kind of primitive handles. Uh, Croyder is the only one that did this 
little scout craft of red in there with the uh and again with the screwdriver in the back the knurling uh you know this was an unusual pair and you didn't see too many of these we were able to get them to close with a they weren't close they weren't lining up before got them to line up nice and remember the rivet you know what the what that looked like polished that all out did the back up here peened it over uh, and, and now there's no more excessive rattle. It's nice and smooth in the hand. It's it's a beauty, isn't it? But like I said, it's very rare because you never see these. In fact, uh, if anybody here has a pair, let me know in the comments because, like I said, you don't see. There's uh, remember they look similar to regular pliers, but this has the double opening at their burner pliers with the cutter in the bottom. Again, the model number eighteen sixty three nine really happy with the way these came out because they are so unusual so in closing it's always nice to see a uh, a tool that uh, hasn't been seen too often or rarely seen to be see it for the first time and then be brought back you know it's nice after a tool has had a long hard life to give it a nice retirement how wouldn't it be nice if we had the same option you know we give the best years of our life for work and then when we're old and decrepit and sh achy shoulders and you know worn out knees then we retire, you know, and we have to kind of make do with what we have. Wouldn't it be nice if we could be restored just as we retired? Anyway, thanks so much for tuning in. Hope you have a great weekend. Take care now. Bye-bye.